I wanted to talk to you about coral again today. Now, you know I love coral. I really do. And I love to go to the beach. Well, several weeks ago, when I was able to go to the beach, I found this beautiful coral. Look at it. Look at the pattern in that. Isn't that neat? All of these little parts go up and around and up and around. That was made by an animal. That beautiful pattern. Well, there's something really cool about coral, and that is that it has a relationship with a plant. Now, you might think that sounds a little funny that an animal has a relationship with a plant, but it does. It has a special relationship called a mutualistic relationship. In fact, there's lots of different relationships that plants and animals have between each other or with each other, but the one I want to tell you about today is called mutualism. Mutualism. Maybe you already know what mutualism means, or maybe you can guess because you know what mutual means. You probably have some mutualistic relationships as well. Do you have any relationship where you give something to the other person that they need, and then they also give you something that you need, where you both benefit by knowing each other? That's kind of like what this relationship is like, this mutualistic relationship. You see, coral makes these rocky formations that house algae. And so because it makes that rocky formation that algae can live in, it offers protection to algae from getting crushed in the waves or getting eaten by other animals. The coral is offering protection to algae, but it's also offering carbon dioxide to algae. Because as you know, animals breathe out carbon dioxide, and plants need carbon dioxide to do photosynthesis, the process where they make their own food. So algae lives inside the coral, and the coral is giving the algae this gift of protection and also this gift of carbon dioxide. But in return, the coral is getting a few things as well from algae. The algae, as a process of photosynthesis, releases oxygen, which then go back to the coral, and the coral needs it. The algae also helps the coral remove waste. So after the coral has eaten and it's getting rid of things it doesn't need anymore, the algae helps take care of that, kind of like a, a garbage disposal. The algae also helps to feed the coral. So while algae is going through photosynthesis, it's making different products like glucose and amino acids, all different things that can be used as food by the coral. So as the coral is giving these gifts of protection and carbon dioxide to the algae, in return, it's getting a gift of oxygen, waste removal, and food from the algae. Both plant and animal are benefiting from being near each other. Isn't that cool? Well, I wanted to share more with you about algae, and I'm going to show you this book I have. It's called Botanicum, and it's a big book, as you can see. It's large. And it's by Katie Scott and Kathy Willis. I got this book because Katie Scott is one of my very favorite illustrators, and she illustrated this book. She's a fantastic artist. Look at these pictures that she drew. Aren't those just beautiful? So I'm going to read a little bit about algae to you while you look at these pictures. I'll leave the book open like this. The Earth was formed around four and six tenths billion years ago. Fossil evidence indicates the presence of algae, the first plants on Earth, about three and eight tenths billion years ago. Algae range in size from single cells to giant seaweeds. 
but they all use sunlight and carbon dioxide to form the air, or from the air, to make food in a process called photosynthesis. And they all lack roots, stems, and leaves, as well as a layer of cells surrounding their reproductive cells. Algae are most commonly found in water, with different species adapted to live in freshwater and saltwater environments. Some species live on land, often in inaccessible locations like rocky crevices in the highest mountains or buried in the soils of the deepest valleys. This tendency to live in out of the way places and their very often small size makes it difficult to count how many different types of algae there are on the planet. Estimates vary widely from 36,000 to 10 million species. Algae are split into 12 groups called phyla. The three most successful and abundant phyla are red algae, green algae, and diatoms. So, I told you about one particular type of algae today, the type of algae that lives in coral, but I didn't tell you what phyla it's from. I wonder, is it red algae? Is it green algae? Is it a diatom? What other kinds of algae can you find out about? Hmm. Or maybe you want to look into mutualistic relationships. What other animals and plants have mutualistic relationships that you can find? Can you make a graph kind of like mine, where you show the different gifts that they give each other? Maybe you can do some beautiful illustrations like you saw in this book. I can't wait to see what you come up with.